in the cloud. That lady always freaks me. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I just have one more thing to do. Bear with us, everyone. And let's see. That's always the be bopping to the music in my I know. Why does it? There we go. Okay, almost one second, everybody. Dun, dun, dun. We're back. I think we're here. <laughs> Just make sure we're going. Yes. Okay. All right. So, good morning, everyone. I'm Rev Jamila Jamie. And I'm Reverend Marianne. And this, and this is Sunday, Sunday morning. morning great. Yay, we're back. Well, I mean, we officially Sunday morning grace has been a little bit back, but we're finally back for us. So yay. <laughs> we are back for our first live stream and uh, recording. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And we trust that you all enjoyed your summer that it was or your break, because uh, I know for some people in some parts of the world, it wasn't summer, it was winter. winter yeah. And they are now approaching spring as we approach fall. So it's it's interesting to think about that, you know, people are experiencing things that are not just what we're experiencing. So even just different parts of the country, we've all been experiencing different weather and different catastrophes and, uh, and in our personal lives, obviously, as well, we have. Yeah. Oh, are we good to go? We are. I like to pull it up on my phone in case anyone comments so I can Got interact. It. And I did not have us muted. So <laughs> as we were coming around on the 3D sound the moment. So we are good. Awesome. Yeah. Well, before we kind of launch into our opening blessing, we want to just welcome everybody back, obviously, and welcome anybody who may be new to Sunday Morning Grace. Mm -hmm. um, we are the Divine Order of the Sacred Rose, and we are ordained ministers, and we are here just to love. We love and to accept and to just meet you where you're at. And each week, we offer words of inspiration. We have a general theme, this month being the theme of lessons learned and reflections of the past summer. Um, and really just hope to inspire you. Our foundation is our 12 tenets, which we'll be reciting later on in the program. Um, but Rev Jamie and I, we have these beautiful stones with the Divine Order of the Sacred Rose. Um, logo and each one of them is inscribed with a tenant and we each drew from our own stones you can see i have my stones on my little altar over here um jamie keeps hers in yeah, they're her hard office to see. they're behind well. my chair but they're they have their own little special spot right behind me and so we both drew one this morning and we're as we talk about our experiences and our reflections and lessons um, from the last few months, we're going to also weave in how that tenant kind of fits in as well, because mm -hmm. they really are a part of our everyday life and it's our foundation. So if this is your first time joining us, we welcome you and we're really excited to have you with us and look forward to having you join us um, each week. Mm -hmm. So with that, mm -hmm. let me get started with just an opening blessing just to kind of get us all in the right headspace in the right frame of mind and to join our hearts and minds and knowing that whether you're joining us live now or whether you're listening to this on a recording later on today later on this week or even months from now time has a continuum and wherever you're at right now the messages you're going to hear are the messages that you're destined to hear at this moment so with that in mind, just take your hand and place them over your heart. And I'm going to place them over both my hearts because I have my heart pin on this morning. And just take a deep breath. And just settle into the space you're in. 
and trust that unless of course you're driving and please don't do that if you're driving don't close your eyes <laughs> but just really try to tune into where you're at tune into your heartbeat your rate of breathing and then just try to slow it down just a little bit just to a comfortable place where you're chill relax your shoulders relax any tension you may have in your body adjust yourself in your seat relax your pace if you may be walking Allow whatever thoughts are in your mind at this moment, your to-do list, your what's going to come next, allow them to be set aside for this moment. Just for a few minutes, take time for you, for your spiritual growth, for your heart space, just knowing that you are important. You are worthy of time for you. And just know how loved you are. You're loved by your community. You're loved by Reverend Jamie and me. You're loved by people around you. Sometimes you don't even know how much you're loved. But trust. Trust that that love is always with you, the divine, the creator. You were created from love. You beam love. You are love. And know that love is the central theme of your life. So be love and spread love and know Love is all around you. Just take a minute to feel the warmth of all that love. And when you're ready, take a deep breath in and let it out. And let's begin Sunday Morning Grace. Mm, that was beautiful, but you always make me want to go to sleep in the most <laughs> complimentative way because I always relax so deeply and then I'm like, goodbye. Oh, no, wait. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, well, beautiful. it's interesting because I never, as we've said before, I really let those blessings come in organically because I really feel, and whether it's in line with the topic or not, I feel like it's always an important message that's just being beamed from the universe mm -hmm. to all of us. And I think the theme of love, I really feel like the theme of love is overarching everything. Mm -hmm. And so it was so beautiful that it came through the way it did this morning. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for me, and I'll, I'll let you begin, but I know for me, that was certainly one of the reflections that came to me this summer is, is love and how important the love of others and the love of self can be. So with that, why don't you share some of your reflections that are share worthy? <laughs> All right. Because you guys know me. And for those who don't know that I have some that are share worthy and some that I text Marianne. And she's like, <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> you do not need to tell me that. But that being said, yeah, you know, I love that love came forward in all of this. And um, the biggest lessons for me this summer have been, and it seems to also be a theme that's been playing out for owners. I know one of our um, community members just kind of posted something along these lines of where they're at right now. And for me, the love of myself, um, the lesson I've learned is that it's okay to withdraw and it's okay to say no. And it's okay to do whatever you need to do for yourself in each and every moment. I think, you know, as we look at all the collective stuff, of course, you know, we, it's not really changed much in um, the in intensity 
ever since you know the pandemic started um my dog is still loudly cleaning himself uh, <laughs> just had this conversation with marianne the other day yesterday actually about the same time um but you know it's just things are very intense and i think we keep waiting for this moment that we can all take a collective sigh and um you know everything will return to somewhat some kind of normal and the reality is is it's just not happening i'm not saying it won't but what i've found in that is that okay if the collective deep breath isn't happening what about my personal deep breath what about me honoring my truth which i you know giggled as we pulled stones i literally pulled the stone that says i honor my truth and it's like i can't make it up right you know and so for me in honoring my truth is just allowing myself and loving myself enough to be exactly where i am because i wasn't doing that towards the beginning of the year and into the spring and even part of the summer and i really started to bump up against burnout i was really getting just kind of grouchy and tired feeling even more anxious than I already was in a quote unquote anxious world. And, um, you know, so it really just took for me to just start saying no, honoring the truth of my needs, honoring the truth of what made me happy. Because I feel that in all of this, no matter where life is, what's happening in it, that we still, everything does start within and it's an inside job. And it's an inside job of, you know, finding our own happiness creating a higher vibration for ourselves by doing that and energetically you know we cause that ripple effect and and for those of you who don't know i'm also a big nerd when it comes to things such as quantum physics and in quantum physics we've actually learned that negative energy cannot bring down higher energy it just doesn't work that way mechanically and that's really kind of stuck with me because now you know if i get around people or i enter myself into conversations if I start to pull down I I check myself and I have a real accountability moment of they're not doing that their words aren't doing that their actions aren't doing that and don't get me wrong it doesn't mean if people say certain things that it doesn't hurt or we don't feel it I don't mean it in that sense but when you find yourself just really allowing yourself to just go down and get lost in that lower frequency that really is a choice. And I know not everybody wants to hear that, but it, it is. Now, again, life throws us certain curveballs and circumstances happen and we can get really depleted and stressed and tired. And of course, you know, our energy can decrease there. And I don't mean it in, in terms such as that, but, you know, in interactions with people, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that there's this theme of division about, you know, so it's like, if somebody doesn't agree with me or I don't agree with them, and anything comes from that, like, do I allow myself to keep entertaining it? Or do I just say, you know what? Okay, agree to disagree, carry on, because I'm not entertaining it. Because I know for me personally, I'm going to start to lower my vibration because I'm going to go into anger. I'm going to go into frustration. I'm going to just flat out get pissed off sometimes because again, that's me, <laughs> angelic me. But, um, you know, so for me to just love myself enough to say, you know what? I'm not continuing this conversation. And then pulling myself back and also finding compassion for others, because I think one of you know the big things I've also learned in this whole journey with loving myself is, you know, not everybody's at the same place. And it doesn't mean one's higher, one's lower, one's better than the other. It just means that we're all processing. We're all in times that most of us, I don't think, have ever been in before. So we're all doing the best we can. And we're all very passionate about certain things. And I think that's beautiful, you know, but it's also for me, like finding that balance of loving myself enough to not entertain it so I can keep my own vibration high. And just, um, you know, I find that that just helps me roll with the quote unquote roll with the punches easier to just, you know, be in that flow. I'm going, you know, I'm floating downstream versus, you know, trying to swim upstream. So again, just circling back around to sum it up, you know, honoring my truth by doing what's right for me and really in the most unselfish way not caring what other people think and I say that in the sense of I think we can kind of get into this attitude of servitude 
and we will cut off our nose despite our face to keep everybody else happy. And that just doesn't work long term, you know. So being able to just say no, like I'm sorry, and I'm even I'm, I'm sorry if this disappoints you, or I'm sorry if you're upset with me for not, but I can't do this right now. And you know, because this is what I need to do for me. And um, being okay with that, it's not easy. It's definitely not always easy, but um, just allowing yourself to disconnect where you need to disconnect so that you can maintain that frequency and you can, you know, again, just kind of roll with things more easy because it's tough times. It's, it's tricky. It's hard. We're all learning. Like, like I say, I don't think many have been, you know, through this or at least as a collective whole, I know a lot of people, you know, have never been through anything this extreme and this big and this just so much unknown and, um, and an unknown that can have life altering outcomes you know so it, it's big things so I feel if we could all just you know honor our own truths and if your truth isn't the truth of someone else that's okay you know the one thing I love about human design is it you know teaches us that we're each our own inner authority so what's right for me may not be right for Marianne but I don't love her any less because of it or vice versa I want Marianne to do what's right for her and what's best for her I trust her to make decisions for herself. You know, I think, <laughs> I think at this point in time in life, Mary Ann is able to make decisions for herself. You know, so if there were ever anything that she made a choice that I didn't agree with, I don't care. I love her. I just care that she made the choice that's right for her because that's what she felt was right for her. Not because somebody else told her that, or she listened to my opinion and did what I asked her to do, even though she knew it wasn't right for her. You know, so it's just, you know, again, having the compassion for others to re and, and re just some respect for each other, because we don't know each other's story. We don't know what each other are thinking. We don't know what this is triggering on so many different levels. So my lessons learned, honor your truth, love yourself, love each other, and hold compassion for yourself and others. That's a pretty lofty lesson. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all. that's all I did this summer how about you <laughs> <laughs> well um as anybody who knows me knows yeah. I had a pretty interesting summer pretty intense um of course Krista's health took a, a nosedive pretty pretty suddenly mm -hmm. um with a heart attack and um ultimately after a four day hospitalization, a week break, and then a 16 day hospitalization ultimately ended up where we had, we had been fearing, which was um, hemodialysis, which, and I'm not gonna get into all the, the pros and cons of everything, but it, it, we were fearing it because we know that it's end of life care. And so, you know, it just warped everything into a new level. but. What I wanted, what I really kind of am focusing on, and first of all, that I allow immediate forgiveness is what I pulled from my stone. And well, that isn't the theme of what I wanted to talk about. It is, it is front and center because allowing immediate forgiveness is forgiveness of self. It's forgiveness of others. And it's, embracing that forgiveness and emulating that forgiveness and modeling that forgiveness because the way everything went down I could be really really frustrated with God God is my focus and I know others look at the universe God is whatever that higher power energy is but God is mine I was angry at God my daughter is 36 I had to stop and think about that. But, and she has, she has just had challenge after challenge after challenge. And I have two choices. I can just forgive and accept and trust. Or I can just become a ball of mush and be angry and be unproductive. And I guess that is the theme of really what I want to talk about, because I really learned how strong I am. I learned how strong my daughter is. And I learned to value 
the medical professionals that are giving her care. And there are wonderful medical professionals and there are so-so medical professionals. We have been truly blessed with the cream of the crop as far as her team. But I've really just, this whole summer has been a lesson in appreciating what you have in the moment and resilience and stick-to-itiveness and asking the questions and loving with the overarching feeling of perspective. Back in January, if we had been talking about dialysis, I would have told you how fearful I was of dialysis because dialysis is very taxing on the body with an already weakened heart. I don't know how much longer Krista has. We, we trust it will be a long time, long time being a relative term, you know, but we, we just have to trust it. We're following the breadcrumbs. But now, dial, I don't look at dialysis as, as, as fearfully as I did before. I understand it more. I'm in the moment. But when that decision came down, it wasn't that sucker punch that it was feeling like this spring when they talked about it, um, it you know, prematurely. And even though it caught us off guard, it even caught her doctors off guard that we had to go this route, it felt okay. And so my real takeaway lesson for everyone is trust where you're at at the moment. Forgive people if you feel like they're wronging you. Because in fact, they may be offering you a great lesson by making you feel uncomfortable or putting you in an awkward situation or saying some harsh words to you. It may be that the words are harsh, but when we take our, we forgive and we sit down and we think about something, it's actually been a seed that's been planted. And while the, the comments may have come through differently and not be as hurt, you know, not, said or done is hurtfully, perhaps it's planting a seed for self-growth or for us to evaluate where we're at or to let go of something that really isn't serving us that we're holding on to for the wrong reasons. I was holding on to, I didn't want Krista to have dialysis because I was fearful that that was going to mean our lives were going to change significantly. And they have, don't get me wrong. But they're not insurmountable. So allow whatever you feel has been done to you, against you, or whether you've done it to yourself. Reflect on that and allow that forgiveness so that you can then learn the lesson, if there's a lesson to be learned. And maybe the lesson is letting go of a person, you know, or letting go of that person that hurt you. And the other is to remember that what we fear today or we can, are concerned about today is going to shift in, in the moment. So what, don't waste your energy worrying about something, put the energy into how to avoid or how to not have a certain circumstance occur, and perhaps it won't, or how to correct something, but really focus on where you're putting your energy. Don't focus on the future. Focus on the present and what you can control. Because that's the only thing we have any knowledge about. None of us have crystal balls. None of us know what tomorrow brings. None of us know what this afternoon brings. So the important thing is to focus on the here and now. And being present in this moment. 
honoring this moment and loving ourselves and others in this moment. And that was my lesson for today. So me and Marianne were just taking it easy this summer. <laughs> It's really funny, like when we actually hear ourselves say, like, I, I mean, I, Marianne knows everything I do because she's my person. Like, she's just one of my people. So outside of all of this, like I still, Marianne is still like, if anything major comes up, I run to Marianne. And of course I try to be there, you know, as best I can for Marianne. So we've been aware of what each other's, you know, even if we don't outwardly say it, we're so in tune with each other. We're very aware if one of us is off or something's not, you know, and finding even that balance of, hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. And even if inside we're like, I don't know that you're fine, but I'm going to respect where you are and just, you know, and I'm not going to push it, you know? So it's like, we know what we've, where we've been energetically, but yet to hear each other say, it's like, wow, like it's been a big summer. Mm -hmm. It's been a really big summer. And, and, and the lessons in that, I mean, obviously with Krista, it's been a huge summer. It's been beyond and other things, you know, transitions and things that have been happening in Marianne's life, you know, like she's really been, but it's like, whew, you talk about the resilience though. This <laughs> woman is the epitome of resilience. I'm just saying, cause it's, it's just been so much. And, um, and see, I don't look at it that way, but yeah, uh, you know, if, if my, if, if I can, be leaving breadcrumbs for others to follow. If I can, if I can set an example that will be a good example for others, hey, I'll have at it. Yeah, um, your stellar example. But I just even think in that, like, wow, like, do we even at times, and not to like dwell in like in a victim mode, but actually in that victor mode of like, holy cow, like, I've been given all this little poo. And look at the fertilizer I made, like rather than, you know, me and my, my thing, I always see, you know, when life hands us poo, we can look at it as just that, like, oh my gosh, I have in my hands or wow, look at this fertilizer to, you know, feed the seeds of intention that I wish to plant. And, um, you know, just honoring you and, and in that honoring myself that we've been through a lot and we have, you know, alchemated it and transformed and just said, you know what, this is what it is. And this is what I'm going to make it. And this is where I'm going from here. So, um, you know, and for each of you, I invite you to really look at the things that you've been through or things that have happened. And just because it might not seem something big in comparison to someone else, like my, my, my summer and my lessons were nowhere near what Marianne has dealt with, but they were really big for me. So what I'm saying in that is that, you know, we're each where we are. So don't downplay your, you know, your victories and your triumphs and your growth, because it might not outwardly appear like something big or monumental or, you know, like just getting through each day at times mm -hmm. is far more, you know, it's far more than enough to give yourself a pat on the back for. And I think like, that is so important. And I'm so glad you brought that up because we each are living our own life on our own life path. We were, we each have a journey and we cannot judge our journey on someone else's. We have to, we have to follow our path. So somebody else may be listening to this and saying, Oh, well, uh, you know, I don't have this to deal with, or I don't have that. So my, you know, my situation isn't as meaningful or as impactful. It is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's important to put things in perspective. If you have a hangnail and that's the worst thing that's bothering, you know, that's the worst pain you have today. It's still a pain mm -hmm. and it's still something you have to deal with. And if every time you're, you know, going to pick up something, you hit that and you have that zing of pain because hangnails can hurt. They can hurt. And okay. <laughs> That is, that is yours. And that is your burden to be carrying at that moment. Mm -hmm. And that is your weight today. That mm -hmm. may be all you can handle. Mm -hmm. And you need to, you need to be okay with this is, this is my burden. And this mm -hmm. is how I'm going to resolve it. So do you go and you take care of the hangman now? Do you not have the right tools for it right now? 
so I put a Band-Aid on it. How are you resolving it? And it's your own problem solving, your own issue resolving. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's just putting one foot in front of the other. There are some mornings you may wake up and say, I can't get my feet to get out of this bed. I'm just going to lay here. And if that's the best you can do and you lay there and you say a prayer and you say, and I'm going back to sleep for an hour, mm -hmm. then you are meeting yourself at where you're at because that's what you need. Mm -hmm. And there may be no good reason, no obvious reason why you're feeling that way, but maybe your body just needs a little bit more rest. Mm -hmm. Just meet yourself where you're at and don't compare yourself, your, your achievements or your mm -hmm. weaknesses to anyone else. Our burden is our burden mm -hmm. and it is mine to live with in the moment and it's mine to resolve. And if you see somebody struggling, just let them know you love them. You care about them. You'll be there to help them talk through their problems. But we can never solve another's problems either. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. only be there to support and to love and to encourage. I love that. I mean, and what greater act of self-love and self-care than to say, nope, I'm going back to sleep because that's what I need. So, you know, and I think, you know, we are, we're in this world that's so conditioned that your worth and your value is determined by how much you do. And it's like, I'm not buying, I'm just letting y'all know right now, Jamila Jamie ain't buying into that narrative or that story any longer. Cause I'll be daggone if I work myself like a dog to the bone to, to, to prove my worth or my value. Like, no, we are all worthy and valuable simply because we exist. Because we exist, you are worthy and you are valuable. You don't need to work 80 hours a week to like earn some medal of honor. And I actually love putting boundaries on my work time because it allows me to be. I can just be in my being. And when I be in my being, that's when I'm able to more hear the messages of like, you know what? I need to rest today. You know what? Even though my mind mentally, I don't feel like doing this. My, my soul says, yes, do this. It's good for me. You know, and like to be able to, to hear those messages and to know that, and especially most of us, if you're watching this, I'm 99.9% .9 certain in some way, shape or form, you are a, a being that is here to uplift others and to, you know, be that love. I think we're all here to be the love, but you know, but be the love, spread the light. And um, we can't do it if we're, we're on the grind all the time. And don't get me wrong. Yes. We have bills and things like that. But I also think the universe sometimes asks us to just relax and pull back and trust. Because I never thought I'd be in the position I'm in right now, a year ago, today. You know, and it's I and I just know it's only getting better than this. You know, so also just, you know, allowing yourself to to just be and hear, like, is this really right for me to be doing this right now? You know, so, and you can even ask, like, am I meant to be here? And, and you might get no, you know, but am I meant to be here right now until another opportunity presents itself? And then you might hear yes. But we don't hear any of that if we don't allow ourselves to just slow down for a minute and to just breathe and be. And it can, I know it can be hard. I know it's a lot easier for me to sit up here and say it, but, um, but I'm also proof that it can happen. And I feel like I'm just your average I'm just your average everyday sorceress, you know? So like things like that don't necessarily seem like they could have been a reality to me, but now that they are, I'm like, Ooh, what can I create next? You know? So like, just, just a gentle reminder that I don't know why or who that spore came out of my mouth. So there it is. <laughs> there it is. Well, I feel complete. Do you? I do. I do. And I just want to say hello to Janice and Chris. They were, they've been chatting with us in the chat. And yeah. Good morning, ladies. Yeah. All right. We're ready to move on to our tenants. We are. All right. Let me pull them up on the screen as we. All right. We invite you to join us as we do our tenants. Yeah. And yeah. Jamie, you want to get us started? Absolutely. And just inviting you all to just, you know, as guided, placing your hands back over your heart, taking a nice deep breath in as we 
get ready to share our tenets, allowing them to really absorb into your cells, absorb into your being. They are so grounding and foundational. And they bring such comfort, at least to me. And I, I know several of us that are just very and in, in, just love them, you know, but just allow yourself the gift of that to really be open to receiving these 12 tenets. I open my heart with deep gratitude and intend today to master my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical energies. I am dedicated to my spiritual practice. I surrender to my soul's purpose through sacred prayer. I own my guidance. I live in partnership with my angels. I serve with a loving heart. I am compassionate in every moment. I trust it's all good. I allow immediate forgiveness. I honor my truth. I listen to the spiritual messages within my physical body. I express myself creatively. I am one with Mother Earth. And so it is. And so it is. And so it shall be as we get ready to depart for this gathering and send you on your way for the week. Um, for those of you not familiar, me and Marianne have kind of crafted our own prayer that we just really love to end our calls with and, and start your week with and send you out in the week with and as you go into the world and, and as it feels right for you, may you also be. O oh, divine creator, keeper of my higher power, I humbly ask that you help me to hear through your attentive ears, see with your clear vision, touch and feel with your gentleness, speak with your non-judgmental tongue and embrace and welcome all with your loving and accepting heart. Blessed be. Blessed be. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. It was so nice to be back with you. Yes, I'm so grateful for any time I get with you, but especially <laughs> this time because it's just, it's so special to me and Marianne. You all still know. Maybe you do. Maybe, hopefully you can feel it because it, it truly is and probably one of our favorite things to hang out and do together. So Absolutely. Absolutely. And next week, Carolyn, Reverend Carolyn and Reverend Dawn will be with you. Uh, to continue our journey into the discussion of lessons and reflections from this past mm -hmm. summer. And we look forward to being with you again next month. And let us know if there's anything we can do to assist or serve you in any way. We will be there for you. Absolutely. And feel free to share your lessons in the, um, in the comments below. We, we love, like, we love to be in touch with you. And we just love to see where everyone's at. So please feel free down below, drop a comment of what, what lesson you've learned this summer. Absolutely. Keep the conversation going. Yes. We love you all. Love you. Have a blessed and beautiful week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.